Brian, you have the number one total offense, number one scoring offense in the country. But when you analyze it, is there like an area of the offense where you think we can get even better at this, or we really need to get better at this, or do you feel like, hey, we're clicking on all cylinders right now? Yeah, there's a lot of things that, that we need to continually uh, improve on for sure. Um, and, it, and it's just it's a focus on execution during the week. Um, you know, we come out in the second half and, and kind of take a sack early on, don't execute that play. Um, you know, had an opportunity for a big play there and then, you know, go three and out. And it's just there's things that, that we got to make sure that we lock in on and um, still a lot to grow from. And, you know, as you start to play against, you know, better and better defenses, uh, the issues are going to continue to emerge, and, and the issues are always there. Um, it's it's the coach's job to identify them, to get out in front of them, and, and that's what we're focused on this week is continually get better on execution and playing really hard in this game because we're playing against one of the better defenses in the country. This is kind of out of left field, but what are your thoughts on college football's overtime rules in Penn State? No one just playing the nine overtime game. What, do you like the overtime rules? Do you not like them? Are you indifferent? Where are you at on that? Uh, I don't know. That was the first time uh, that I've seen anything like that, for sure. I think that's... It's, all of us is we're in that same boat. We're, we're too sure what to think of it all, but I know that you know the, the, the long overtime game uh, that happened a few years ago. You know, it it seemed like it just went on too long, and, and the guys were a little bit at risk there. So, um, so this was certainly a new experience. I don't think that's what they expect when they put the rule in there. But um, so I guess I, the only thing I thought about is I better have more two point plays ready to go. You had a chance to, to look at the film and, and watch CJ's throw to Jackson where he puts it between the three defenders. What you, would you make of that, kind of looking at it again on, on replay? Uh, no, I mean, I, I thought that the um, the route was, was, was run correctly and, and the timing was good. Um, you know, we call that a one-inch throw. We throw the ball right over the, the baseball net, and, and he delivered on that throw. I mean, that was, that was a big-time throw. And, um, you know, there's times to take those shots, and there's times where – you got to be. You got to understand when to maybe just check the ball down. But uh, he was decisive and, and he delivered the ball. And it was well done. Kind of like shows the confidence that he's playing with. Because I imagine that to thread a needle like that, you have to be pretty confident as a quarterback. Yeah, I, I do. I think so. Um, but you know, that, I mean, that's that's kind of uh, we've talked to, for a little while about when you play against better defenses. You know, there's not a lot of guys who are open. You know, that's kind of how it goes. And as we start to play more and more of these teams, you know, guys are less and less open. And that's part of playing really good, uh, you know, playing well at quarterback. But to your point, you know, in order to make throws like that, you got to feel confident about it. But that goes back to practice. You know, if we're practicing like that on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and he's already body repped it, then you have more confidence in a game because the picture looks like it did during the week. I just want to ask quickly about the stats of Master and Marcus Crowley. Yeah, uh, but Marcus is going to be out for a long time. Um, it's, it's a long-term injury, and certainly prayers go out to him and, um, you know, it was something that happened during the bye week, and you know he's working towards recovery, but it's going to be a long, long road for him. Uh, Master, we'll hope to get back this week. Yeah, Brian, just to follow up on that, in terms of your running back depth, you know, how do you feel about where your running back depth is right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, for this point of the year, we're doing okay. You know, it's, it's part of the game. You're going to have some guys who get bumped and bruised along the way. You're going to lose some guys, but uh, but I was excited to see Mayan get back out there. And, and it was, you know, it was, it was good to see Evan. I thought Evan had some good snaps there. So you get Master back, and you feel like you have four going into this game. I am good when he left the game the other day. I looked like maybe on TV he was favorite something. Yeah, I mean, he'll be practicing today. Yeah, you know, in, in game sometimes you get battered. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a rough, tough game, and there's a lot of things that happen. But, uh, but you know, expect him to practice this week. These injuries and things that you talked about with the running backs, right? How challenging has it been from week to week to get a feel for who you're going to have, how you're going to hand out the carries? It seems like it's just been a revolving door there. Yeah, a little bit, but that's that's part of college football. You know, I think you know different teams across the country deal with the same thing, and, and we we know that um, it's going to be unexpected. And that's what we we talk about to our players all the time. You just don't know what's going to happen, and uh, and that's why you know you have to recruit depth, and guys got to understand their opportunity is going to come if they just continue to work and because it's a rough game and guys get injured and you have to be able to you know adapt with that and um, but but I think Tony's done a really good job with his room was it uh, like for you on the field on the sideline to watch Travion when he gets rolling it seems like trying to arm tackle him would be a bad idea well um, you know it, it's everybody but but he's running hard and uh, but our offensive line is is you know uh, making holes for him and the tight ends are doing their job and um, 
you know, wide receivers did a good job blocking on some of those runs as well. So, I mean, it's everybody involved, but but um, it, it's good when you see them getting a rhythm. But the big thing, you know, to me with, with those guys is taking care of the football. And we have to continue to work on that and keeping our pads down. It's all the, the little things that are going to be important as we play, you know, some of these matchup games. Ryan, what is your, your blocking success at the moment in terms of it just feels like a lot of times if your guys are running the screen or whether it's your receivers on the outside or an offensive lineman supposed to get a linebacker at the second level, it seems like you guys make the block a lot. And sometimes, you know, you watch other teams, it's like, hey, you drew up the play pretty well, but that guy missed his block and it got blown up. Are you guys doing that pretty well right now? Well, I, I think it, it goes back to what we talked about with execution, you know, and I think sometimes we say things and it, it sounds like coach talk, but that's that's something we're taking a lot of pride in. You know, we want to have great energy. We want to have great execution. We want to have great toughness, and we want to have great discipline. Those are the four things that we've been talking about here coming out of the bye week. And, and, and execution is important. You know, execution fuels emotion, and it's something that, you know, if you love the game of football, you're constantly trying to figure out that the game of chess of football is, you know, for instance, with the offensive line, you know, what are the calls? How are they going to attack us? What is the line movements? What type of technique are they using? Are they two gappers? Are they penetrators? Is it a three down front? Is it a four down front? Am I going to get help? Do I need help on this block? Or can I get up to the second level to make that block? Where is the, the running back in proximity to my block? Like all those things are things that we have to continually work on. And it, it takes a lot of work. It's not just the physical part. It's the mental part. And um, I, I think that we've been doing a, a very good job of that. We need to continue to, to build on that. But I think that's what, that's what you're seeing is guys who are – and, again, it goes back to practice. You know, if, if you're doing it practice and you've physically done it, when you go into a game, you feel more confident. So today's a big day for us. And when you are playing a great defense that specifically has a couple great defensive players, do you – how aware are you of we got to make sure we control that guy, whether you talk about it, you know, with – what you scheme up during the week. I guess I'm asking, Mike McFadden, I thought, is one of the best linebackers in the Big Ten. And it felt like there were times last week when he would read some stuff and maybe be somewhere, and then you guys blocked him. You know, I think on the screen touchdown to Travion, Ruckert went, like, right to him and took him out of play, and that was it. How are you aware, how aware are you of great defensive players on the other team? Uh, yeah, we're very aware. You know, our, our, our personnel conversations are um, – very significant in, in trying to figure that part of it out. Um, and, and you want to always give your guys the best chance to be successful. But at the end of the day, like, Rucker has to make that block. If he doesn't make that block, it doesn't matter. But um, but anytime you're, you're, you're calling a play or running a play, you want to put your guys in an advantageous situation. And whether it's personnel, leverage, you know, whatever it might be, and, and matchups, you know, as you start to get into the, some of these, you know, really good defenses are important. You know, is that a good matchup for us? And you can't always project that correctly, but you try to play tendencies. This is a game of tendencies. And the more times that, you know, you're putting your guys based on tendencies in a, in a, in a good situation, then, then you're doing your job. Coach, as you look at their defense, what jumps out? Uh, we thought this would be a heck of a battle a couple of weeks ago. Is any of the luster off it? Well, I think the defense has played well. I mean, they really only gave up 10 points again last week. And, um, I think they're averaging 14 points a game, uh, giving up. So it's a very good defense. Uh, Brent Pry an excellent defense coordinator, has been for a long time. Um, they have a very good scheme, very good players. I think when you look at their front, they're very active. Uh, the linebackers are very good. Uh, and their back end is, is uh, you know, veteran now. They've played a lot of football. So, um, you know, they've, they're, they you know, one of the better defenses in the country, in my opinion. And there's a lot that goes into that. I think it's scheme. I think it's coaching. But they have really good personnel as well. You've said in the past you didn't know for sure what to expect this year. Is your offense where you thought it would be at this point in the season? And how much better can it, how much room for improvement is that, I guess? Well, I think every week is um, is a new challenge. I think of every week is like a, a whole season. You just don't know how the, how the game is going to play out based on, you know, matchups, based on scheme, based on weather, based on how, you know, how either side of the ball is playing. There's just so many different things that come into play. And, you know, try not to go into each each game with, with any expectations other than just execute at a high level and play, take it one play at a time. Um, prepare the best we can during the week and go into the game and, 
and try to go from there. But listen, there's going to be there's going to be roadblocks along the way. There's going to be bumpy times here as we head into into this game. Um, you know, this is a very very good defense, and so we have to just sustain when you know things don't go as well as they have the last couple of weeks. But that being said, every time we get on the field, we're trying to score. I mean, that's that's obviously what we're trying to do, and um, and we just got to stay humble on this thing, but also continue to build confidence. Is there things you want recruits to take from this weekend when you've got so many people here? Yeah, well, I think it gives everybody an opportunity to see what a you know big time college atmosphere is like, and, and obviously what Buckeye Nation's like, and, and playing a, a prime time game, and uh, and that's you know, that's why you come to Ohio State is to play in games like this, and, and we want recruits to to embrace that. You know, we want. Um, you know, the guys who want to play in these type of games to come here. And so when they're able to see it with their own eyes, it's a lot different than seeing it on TV. You've got commits who are maybe overly enthusiastic about the peer recruiting part of this. Is this where they can maybe do their best work at? Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's great. And, and I think that's really picked up steam the last, you know, three to four years is, you know, the, the peer recruiting and, and guys, you know, uh, building relationships before they even get here. Um, but, but they've been excited for this game for a while. The recruits have been talking about this, and they have their red outfits ready to go. So it's going to be good. Hey, Ryan. Um, you've mentioned a lot about kind of steadiness with CJ, not riding the roller coaster. Is that something, as you guys get officially into Penn State League, that you find yourself having to remind him more of because of kind of the grassroots of this game? I just think that uh, you just – like any week, you talk to them about what to expect. You know, what what are the what are the, the situations? What are the conditions? You know, all those things. And you know, um, that's part of coaching. But yeah, I mean, this this game will be a little bit different. You know, it's going to be electric. It's going to be at home. We're playing against a really tough physical defense that is one of the better defenses in the country. And in a matchup game, you got to learn to play a little field position football and those type of things, and and being smart and, and all the things that have got him to this point. But at the same time, I mean, he's got to go. You know, do what he's done the last couple of weeks, and that's go out there and play with confidence, prepare at a high level, and lead his team. Ask a couple of defenses line. How do you see the dynamic of that room change, especially as you've seen younger guys come along and then seeing some of the older guys kind of get back to what you've been used to seeing? From yeah, well, we're getting some other some of the older guys back, which is good, and um, you know they're they're starting to really show up, which is which is great. And then the younger guys who kind of early on had to had to play, um, you know, kind of forced into the into uh, some roles, but now now there's real depth there. So uh, I think that room's coming around. They're, they're, again, you can see some energy there. You see them with good pad level, <clears throat> and now they're producing as well. So again, a bigger challenge this week, but uh, but you're seeing a lot of progress. Brian, uh, I asked you a couple weeks ago about you know, the challenges as a freshman and the challenges of this second half of the season. Obviously, you guys handled it, yeah, fine, but as you said, it comes say this is this is the big one uh, thus far. What, what is the approach this week? How much does practice change? Does it not change? What, what's different when you are facing a team like that State that brings what they bring? Just, just the opponent, and you know our our standard is not going to change. But uh, but we also know what's in store, and so we've we've got to utilize every minute of the week. Um, that's that's what's important. You know when you when you're playing in big games, <clears throat> no stones unturned. You know, everybody's got to utilize every minute of the day. You, know, you can't waste a rep. You can't waste a, a minute in meetings. You got to be efficient as a coach. Uh, players need to get their rest. You know all those things. And um, but other than that, I mean, we're going to do practice the way we've done practice still. You know, uh, since week one, and um, and that's the best way we know to prep. There seems to be a perception you know, Penn State not in the top ten anymore. Two losses. You don't seem to have that approach. That this is any different than maybe how people were looking at it. No. Why is Penn State still as good as, as you thought they were, even though they've lost twice? Well, when you look at the games that we've had with them in the past, um, they're always a dogfight. That's just the way it's been, and and I know it's going to be that way. They they have uh, a lot of pride. Uh, they're a very good program. Coach Franklin does a very good job. I got a lot of respect for for the two coordinators, Brent Pry and obviously Mike Yurcich, who we know well. Um, I mean, they're they're one of the best programs in the country, and so it, it's it's hard to beat these type of teams and. You know, we know when Penn State comes into town, we got to be on our game, and this is going to be one of those games. It's going to be physical, back and forth, and um, you know we got to start fast and be ready to play for four quarters. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, we're we're kind of taking it week to week, but but you are seeing first off some some guys fit into some roles that you know wasn't there a month ago, and I think we all recognize kind of who guys are, who the starters are, who some of the guys who are are rolling at different positions, and uh, and guys are producing, and I think there's a lot of confidence there. I think. Uh, the way that we're preparing on a week-to-week -week basis with the defensive staff has been, been solid and efficient. Um, again, big, bigger challenge coming. Big, bigger challenge is coming. But again, the, the, the goal for them is to identify the issues before they emerge and, and get them addressed. And there's certainly always issues to work on. There's a lot of talk about talking about the moments. You say you well. You also did something with the boundary and the field, right? Yeah, uh, just having the ability to do to line up a couple different ways. One, you know, to the formation, and two, to the to the to the field and boundary. Um, and and those are just different ways to give the defense a different look. And um, you know, those guys have had had long conversations about again what's best schematically for our players, but then what also challenges the defense. I mean, excuse me, yeah, for the for the offense. Played, I think we're missing like, all their starting quarterbacks or, or most of them. When you look at, besides just being veteran, you look at Penn State's secondary, what's there that's going to challenge your receivers and CJ Moore this week? But yeah, well, Castro Fields has played for a long time, a uh, very good player, veteran, understands that style of defense. You know, I feel like over the years they've had a lot of corners who have played in that style of defense for a long time. He's one of them. Uh, you know, Porter uh, played against us last year, very long. Very athletic. Um, again, does a good job in their, their defense. I think Brisker is one of the you know better safeties that we played against uh, this year. Um, he's he's physical in the box. He's athletic. He runs around. Um, I just think across the board, you know, they're they're athletic back there, and uh, it allows you know them to run some different schemes. They can man you up. They can zone you up. They can do a couple different things, and, and they do a lot of pressuring now, and uh, and they're aggressive with that. And I know you know they'll continue to do that in our game. Last year, Dotson had a big game against you guys. Uh, is that something that Denzel is prepared for to be part of taking that away? Do you kind of look forward to seeing, I guess, how he rises to probably a, a bigger kind of challenge than he might have faced yet this year? Yeah, I think Dotson's one of the better wide receivers in the country, and we got to know where he is at all times. Um, and, uh, you know, they're going to try to find ways to get him the ball for sure. And so, you know, you know however we go about doing that, that's, that's part of the schematic stuff that we'll work on this week. But... Uh, you know, we have to know exactly where he is. Hey, Coach, I know uh, Julian had been dealing with some injury issues, but he did not get in this week despite uh, seemingly being available for the game. Is he still working through some, some things? Yeah, he, I mean, we're expecting a full week of work this week. Uh, he was available in emergency role last week, but we just didn't think it was the right thing to do. Um, but we're expecting to practice this week and be available for the game on Saturday and play. And then with, with Marvin greeting out as a champion this week, what did you like um, out of him, uh, you know, aside from the obviously the, the causing the safety on special teams, but his, his receiving work as well? Well, it, it starts with special teams. I think his attitude has been excellent on kickoff return, on punt return. Um, and that's where it starts. He and Emeka both have been very, very good on special teams. And that it just translates over to, to playing uh, on offense and defense. But uh, I was I was impressed with, with the catch he caught over the middle where he got smacked after catching the, 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 the five-step slant. And, uh, and showed some toughness there. You know, obviously with the play he made on the safety, and we caught another ball. So um, he's got a very, very bright future. Ryan, when you guys were, I guess, assessing some of the defensive changes you wanted to make, I realize as coaches you have a lot of experience. Maybe it's not new to you, but for your players, like how much of what you're doing now was stuff that you had maybe worked on in the off season as, as a consideration for a changeup, and how much of it was totally new to them when you came in to meet after the Oregon game? Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that we came in and it was like out of left field. Um, and some things maybe we, we, we uh, toyed with the year before. Uh, but so many of our guys were, were so young that they they were just trying to get lined up in the spring and the preseason. So um, I think we've done a good job of changing it but not overwhelming them. Um, and, and we have to continue to do that. I think any kind of change really, I mean, it, it here seems – somewhat substantial can kind of go awry, I think, on you. It, it, it could not go the right way, but it seems to have gone pretty well for you guys. What does it say about your players, I guess, if they kind of take it to that and have not 
you know, shown any real kind of breakdowns as you're trying to transition to a different style of defense? Well, you know, and I met with those guys right after the Oregon game and, and just talked to them about that there needs to be ownership across the board. If this thing is going to work, everyone has to take individual ownership and then unit ownership. And, you know, we're going to do everything we can to try to come up with some schemes to put you in a better posi better position. But at the end of the day, we all have to own it. And as the head coach, i got to own it. And then individually, the players have to own it. And it's the coach's job to put them in the best schematic advantage possible. And uh, and that's that's what we're going to do week in and week out. But I think maybe what you're seeing is that ownership. Like, okay, we got to own this thing. we got to make it work because that's, that's when you have really good defense. Ryan's question more Marvin Harrison. How have you seen him learn from guys like this a lot in here? We'll see guys who kind of kick similar to him came in. How he's talented and Marvin, he's got a father who probably gives him advice. Just, you know, he's just, have you seen him just take the advice and kind of apply it? Well, I, I think, like you said, he, he comes from a background where he understands what working is. Um, he uh, you know, had a pretty high football IQ when he came in. But I think um, you know being around some of those guys has allowed him um, some perspective of you know guys who are playing at a high level and what he strives to be, but I, I've just I've been very impressed with the way he's kind of come about uh, you know every day in practice. He works hard. He shows up every day. He's got a great attitude, and he's you know he's you know he's shown toughness in games. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm really excited about his future, and you know I think he's going to help us here down the stretch. I don't know. I just think that over over the years, you know, when when you do that, you get yourself out of whack. You know, you start to think something's going to happen, and you can't do that. You can't make any assumptions. You can't take anything for granted. Um, and that's just the way this game is. And the minute you start to do things like that, this game will catch you. You have to stay humble. You have to, you know, continually focus on those little things, not expect anything other than, you know, great effort and you know, obviously focusing on those type of things. But but other than that, I mean, you just don't know what to expect on a daily basis. And that's what, shoot, you've seen that this, this year in college football. I mean, anything can happen on any given Saturday. So, um, you know, having that kind of well white belt mentality, you know, where like, you know, you show up every day and you're just, just focus on the little things and you continue to build that up as, as the week goes on. Um, I just something that I think works. CJ, are you asking more of him than you did Justin and Wayne at the same point that they're starting? Um, I guess different things, probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know. I'd have to think about where he's at compared to where they were at that at their time. I think the one thing he didn't have that that Dwayne had was those couple years where Dwayne was here. You know, CJ, you know, last year really didn't get all of that work. Um, I guess Justin was in that same boat, but we kind of asked him to do some different things maybe his, his, his first year there. So um, probably not more or less, probably just different things. You're not scheduled to play Cincinnati, but you might be down the road. Have you noticed uh, what they're up to, and are they deserving of their status? No, I know uh, Luke Fickle does an unbelievable job, and they've done a great job and had some good wins. So, you know, as uh, first off, you know, there's some Ohio State guys down there, so we pull for them. And being from the state of Ohio, you know, we, we pull for them. But, uh, but you know, proud of the season they're having, and you know, uh, you know, I'm just happy for them. I play as many as four ranked teams down the stretch here. And you, I guess touched on it a little bit. How do you keep the blinders? Well, you just you just turn on college football on, on any given Saturday, and you just watch it, you know. And I think our guys know that. First off, you know, we've already lost a game, so uh, we know what that's like if we don't bring it, and how it can come down to one or two plays. You know, we don't have to just say that to our guys; they've lived it, and they understand what the consequences are. So, I think we have our attention there. I think our guys understand that; they're a little scarred, callous from that, um, which is a good thing. Um, but like you said, we got to stay humble, and we got to stay on it, and we can't let little things slip. Um, because, you know, if we continually stay locked in on this thing, that gives us our best chance to, to win. And it's all about winning this game on Saturday night. It's going to be hard. And we've got to show up. And we've got to play you know, all the way four quarters. Back, right. Spencer, hold up. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you.
one team's output. It seems like the first drive of each game, the defense gives up a few chunk plays and it doesn't give up anything. I know that some of that is scheming and bad scripts from the offense, but how do you kind of try to remedy that? And do you think that could be a concern about that? Uh, I mean, I hope not, but um, but you're right. I mean, you know, there's been a couple of those drives where they, they've, they've schemed up a couple of things early on and, and caught us. I, I think the good news is we made adjustments to get them fixed. But, but yeah, you know, you got to be ready for those things because, you know, the offensive guys try to come up with things that, you know, really put stress on a uh, on a defense, especially early in, early in the game and on that first drive to try to set a tone. And so, you know, we got to have a good plan for that. Well, I think it, it keeps some good synergy in that room and good unit, um, you know, harmony because good guys are all playing and they're in there and they're all part of it. So, and they all understand it's a long season and it's a physical season. And, you know, this stretch we're about to go on, we're going to need them all. So, um, I think that's, you know, Larry's been doing an excellent job with that. Coach, you, you made, uh, made it very clear early in the year and during uh, the beginning of the season how critical it was going to be for you to sell in depth. You talked a lot about how hard it was for you last year because you didn't have those games and those chances. In, in terms of your, uh, you know, your building that here for the first seven games of the year, are you happy? Do you want to see more? Are you pleased with what that part of things are? Well, I'm, ju I'm just um, happy that we had an opportunity to get guys out there and get those reps and play. And it keeps everybody moving in the program when they're out there playing. And, it, and, it's, and it's, it's developing you know, your youth um, for the future. And that's, that's really good. And when I say future, it might be this week. It might be in two weeks. It might be next year. You don't know. But that's part of being a team. And, and anytime you get those guys out there, you can coach them. You can get on the film with them. We were coaching those guys in the fourth quarter like it was an even score. You know, I think that's, that's what you need. And um, that's what we missed last year. So hopefully, again, it pays dividends down the road. Like trivia, early in the year, you need to work a bit more on this pass protection. Obviously, the running part of his game is exploded on the seams. Are you happy with the steps he's made in the pass protection? Yeah, I think, I think that, you know, he and Mayan, um, Master, they, they've been solid. You know, Evan missed one the other day, but then came back and, and did a good job on the, the play to, um, you know, Cade Stover. So, you know, I think it's, it's going to be harder and harder. You know, uh, Penn State will be. Be blitzing us and coming after us, and so we got to do a great job of protection because that's a big part of the passing game is making sure that the quarterback is clean. Talked about kind of the scars from the Oregon game. Just curious, what's the biggest difference you see in the locker room, maybe from an undefeated team the last two seasons to kind of this team that has suffered a loss? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know um, because you just don't know what's coming next. So you just you just continually work it week in and week out. Um, you know, again, I think that our guys have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly already, even at this point of the season, which is a good thing. Um, we're still young. We're still figuring it all out. But um, you're, you're seeing a lot of guys build confidence, and it's, it's tangible. I mean, you can, you, can, you can grab onto it. You can feel it. Um, but there's still a lot that comes with that. And um, the focus just has to be on execution, toughness, discipline, playing with great energy. And if we continually do that, don't let any of these other distractions get in our way, because that's the other part of it. You know, when you when you lose, you know, you, you can't let the noise kind of affect you. Well, it's the same thing when you start to pick up some wins here and you, you play well. You know, a lot of people saying how you know how well we're playing. Well, we have to uh, ignore that noise as well and just stay locked in on what's important right now. And that's that's a great Tuesday practice. And a primary target in the 23 class, both similar body types, like 5'9, five, 5'10, five, similar playing styles, explosive. It looks like they can fit in the slot mostly. Is that a philosophy for you and Brian going forward to try and bring in uh, a body type like that, playing style like that, specifically like one of those receivers in, in each class? Um, if they're available. Like, we won't just fit somebody into that role just because we need somebody in that role, if that makes sense. Like, we're going to try to find the best available. Um, now, they have to be in certain, you know, specifications, um, but but we, we know how to adapt, and I think that's something that we're, we're proud of here on offense is that based on who we have, we've been able to put those guys in the right position, and, and that's what coaching is, you know. But, but when you have a great one who's built a certain way, 
and you want him to be a Buckeye, and you'll figure out ways to get him the ball and how to adapt from there um, within reason. Within reason. And then with offensive tackle recruiting, um, the past couple cycles you've had misses on a couple high-profile five-star guys and wound up taking a couple of developmental type guys in the past two classes. You said last week you kind of have to be careful about how many developmental guys you take, uh, especially that position. Uh, how do you feel about offensive tackle recruiting? Is it has it met your standard, or do you guys need more, more of that? Uh, well, I, I think when you look at the way our tackles are right now and what we have in the program, um, I've been very impressed with the way that our tackles have played. Um, and that's really the, the true gauge, right? Um, you, know, you have some guys who are right now with us, um, Thayer Munford, uh, Dewan Jones, um, I could probably name a couple other that weren't highly recruited, but they were developed and they're playing at a high level now. Uh, and then you have some other guys who were recruited, who were really high, highly recruited that maybe didn't work out. So at the bottom line is finding the right fit for Ohio State and what we do and then developing them at high level. And then what is the ultimate evaluation, how they play when they're here? So to me, it's more about where, where are we at right now? Like let's evaluate Nick petit Ferrer, DeWan Jones, Thayer Munford, Paris Johnson, you know, all those guys in our program. You know, when you, when you grab a guy, you say, okay, this is the guy we want. How are you going to develop and what's he going to look like in three or four years? And to me, that's the most important thing, not how many stars they have. Uh, Ryan, I looked out there on Saturday night, and I go, well, that's a new formation. And then I realized you guys were in a huddle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it very – and obviously, you know, it was obvious what y'all did from there with that. With that, uh, Who brought that up? Who brings that up in Pratt? In, 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 do y'all do that on Sunday? You decide you're going to throw a little something new wrinkle in every week. How does that work uh, as far as going into a game? You got the out formation a few weeks ago, et cetera. Yeah. You, get so, you guys get excited about, like, the QB sneaks and the fullback and the huddle. Yeah, all that stuff. It's good. Um, it's it just if we think that it gives us something, we'll do it. And, and we just have constant conversations about what we think is best that week and, and why. And um, <clears throat> we do that in the off season. You know, we'll, we'll do that. We start um, really every team period. We'll huddle together. And CJ will call it in the huddle so that they can hear it because that's different than seeing a signal. You know, when, when you live in that world of seeing signals, then you actually verbally hear it. There's two different things there. So uh, we try to do that and work on that in the spring and in the preseason. And then we try to start, you know, every drill with that, where they actually hear the call so that you know, if we decide to use huddle in the game, that there's no real problem there. And, uh, you know, you talked a while ago about the, the defense and the adjustment. Uh, you know, I asked you a couple of weeks ago about the way, what, how much you'd like the prep work that's going in with this team during the week yeah. and stuff. And, or the adjustments uh, that they're making defensively clearly uh, from the first uh, uh, possession on, is that an offshoot of what you're seeing during the week? I, I, I think so. I hope so. I mean, the proof's still yet to be seen, but uh, I, I just I, I see that. I see guys who like football, who, who care about the details, who are talking football. Um, again, you, you go do bed check, and they're working on their tips and their tests. And at, at a walkthrough, guys are locked in. Um, we went to a special teams walk through the, the morning of the game, and, and I've never seen guys more energized and just sharp. And it's like they were literally in the game. I mean, they had bent knees. They were sweating after the walkthrough. And I walked out of that walkthrough saying, you know, we're going to have a heck of a night because that's that's what you need if you want to play at a high level of college football. You can't just show up. you got to take all that seriously because if you've already played it once in your head, if you prepared so well, then you can play with great confidence and anticipation. And so uh, that's what we're chasing. With CJ, obviously he fit a few throws in there the other night that were really nice. Is there a fine line between being confident and cocky with, with a quarterback? You have to watch that with a young quarterback. Well, I think confidence is very important. Um, but like you, like you, you can't ride the roller coaster. You know, you have to stay disciplined. You have to trust your eyes. And, um, you know, you can't test your limitations in a game. You know, maybe sometimes in practice, which isn't a bad thing. But certainly not when it comes to game. you got to be smart. you got to stay disciplined. And you got to take care of the football. And then based on the situation, you know, there's times, whether it's a third down or you got to have it or a fourth down or a two-point play where maybe you can you can take a little bit of a chance. But that's that's all part of that growing process that we talk about all the time. But, but staying disciplined and making sure you take care of the football is critical.